Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. In today's video we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to talk about setting up a pan adapter on a Mac. This will be using the RSP1A and Cubic SDR. We haven't really given the Mac much attention in these videos, so I thought it was about time we did something about that. So firstly, we've already downloaded and installed the Mac API and the Cubic SDR program from strplay.com. And we verified operation of Cubic SDR with the RSP1A. And now we want to add pan adapter functionality to our rig. There's two important parts to that. The first one is to set up the RF signal path so that you're sharing signals between the rig and the RSP while preventing any possible damage to the RSP during transmit. And we've covered that fairly extensively in other app notes which are available for download from sdrplay.com. Look on the app notes tab for guide to setting up an RSP as a pan adapter. The second part that we're going to go through today is how to connect the rig to your Mac to set up control or sync, sync functionality between the two. Now I'm going to use a Kenwood TS590SG but the basic methods apply to any rig that has CAT capability. The reasons I'm using the Kenwood are several. Firstly, I have one on hand, which is pretty important. Secondly, it's very easy to set up the RF signal sharing because of the DRV output on the back of the SG model. But if you don't have that capability, for example, if you have the Plane 590S, you can always use a TR switch like the uh, MFJ 1708 B-SDR to share the antenna between the rig and the RSP. And the final reason I use it is because it has a USB output on the back which just makes connecting it to the Mac so much easier. So first let's go over and look at Cubic SDR. So here we are running Cubic SDR V0.2.4 which I downloaded from the sdrplay.com website and we have it hooked up to the uh, RSP1A connected via the uh, DRV output on the Kenwood and we, we can hear that uh, it's working we know that uh, Cubic is up and running we know that the RSP1A is up and running so now the next step is we want to uh, hook it up to our rig I'm going to put my little uh, camera back up on the screen here and uh, you can see the Kenwood there off to my left. The Kenwood at the moment is turned on, although tuned to a different frequency, and uh, has no effect on, uh, on Cubic, as you can see. And the rig is turned on primarily because I'm using the DRV output to feed my RSP1A, so I had to have the rig on for that reason. But uh, the next step is to connect the Kenwood to our Mac, and to do that, we first need to get the right drivers uh, to talk between the Mac and the Kenwood. So the next step is to turn off the radio, which I do here, and uh, what little signal we had uh, we now see has gone away completely, and now we need to go find the drivers. Now the Kenwood uses a Silicon Labs chipset, the CP210X, and uh, I previously downloaded uh, the drivers for use with uh, a Windows laptop. But for today's exercise, we can go down the Silicon Labs page and we look for the download for Macintosh. Here it is here, download for Macintosh OS X. And we'll click on download uh, VCP. And uh, we see Safari's downloading the, uh, the files for us. Uh, if we now go look in our downloads folder, we should find that here somewhere. Here we see the Silicon Labs uh, disk image file, which we can open up. Uh, then we get asked things like, do we agree? And of course we do. It's now going to open up the disk image. And uh, it will open up a device, and we see here that there is the VCP driver package. So we'll double click on that to install the package. It will now guide us. More agreements to a accept and uh, yes of course I agree now I want to install preparing for installation wants my password so I will provide that uh, 
Now sometimes uh, during the install you will get a warning that says uh, that it's from an unidentified developer and should it be allowed to install, in which case you need to take a little trip to uh, system preferences. And if we go to security and privacy, you'll see a message in this area here and you can just do install anyway if you uh, are prompted to do that. And it's now finishing uh, registering whatever it's downloaded. For some reason this is a fairly slow install. It's not a very big file but I noticed uh, on previous occasions it does tend to take its time. Okay, as I mentioned before, it does sometimes take a while to install the drivers, but it's now uh, finally completed successfully. Do we want to keep it? No, we might as well just move it to the trash. And we can close that down. And now we can go back. To Here we are back at Cubic. And now that we've installed the drivers, the next step is to connect our Kenwood to the Mac. First thing then is to connect the USB cable from the back of the Kenwood into a USB port on the Mac. Now we can turn the rig back on, and once the rig is turned on, we see signals again appearing uh, from the RSP. We can verify that by listening. And now it's time to set up the uh, various parameters to control the rig. If we go up to the menu item, rig control, the first thing is to select the model of our rig. You can see there are many supported radios on this list and for that we can thank the folks at uh, Hamlib and also uh, Charles the author of Cubic for putting uh, the, including this as part of the current distribution of Cubic SDR. So we'll select the 590 SG. The next step is to connect the, or to select the serial rate. Now I've selected 9600 board and uh, the reason for that is that I've done previous setups with this radio on Windows computers and 9600 was the only board rate I could use that gave consistently reliable operation. I don't think you'll have any problem running different board rates, but I'm using that purely because that is the value I have set up in the menu for the USB port on the Kenwood. Menu 68 sets the board rate for the USB connection and it's already set to 9600 so I'm simply matching that serial rate in this menu item here. As an aside, if you ever do change the board rate from the menu within the Kenwood, uh, I believe it's necessary to turn off the power to the Kenwood, turn it back on for the changes to take effect. So now that we've set the serial rate, the other key parameter is the control port. And now that we've installed the uh, drivers, we see Silicon Labs USB to UART appearing here as an available port. If you used uh, different drivers corresponding to whatever hardware you're using, uh, that should also appear here. You can select it from the menu and then click on OK. OK, now it's time to uh, fine-tune some of the, uh, the settings. Under Rig Control, the first one is Control Rig. Obviously, we want to select that so that when we change the frequency within Cubic, that change is reflected on the rig itself. Next, we have Follow Rig. Now what follow rig does is when we change the frequency on the rig it means that that same change is reflected in the tuning within cubic S SDR. Now you may notice already that the uh, frequency on the rig has now already changed and matches the center frequency shown within cubic. Now we're not really that interested in the center frequency we're more interested in the tuned frequency. So if we select track modem Track modem, uh, modem is cubic speak for what we would think of as a VFO. So by tracking the modem, what it means is, is that the rig will track the frequency selected as our tune frequency within cubic SDR. Now you'll notice that at this point, the tune frequency and the center frequency are the same. And as you may be aware, in uh, SDRs running in zero IF mode, you never want to tune to the same frequency as the center frequency because of problems uh, from the infamous DC center spike. So we want to leave the center frequency somewhere separate from our tune frequency. We can accomplish that by checking the floating center, floating center frequency checkbox from the menu. 
And having done that, what we can do is we can click somewhere else on the spectrum, for example, uh, down here, WWV, and uh, now we see that the tune frequency has changed to 10 megahertz, the center frequency remains at 10.07, and the rig is following our tune frequency. And uh, we can have a listen. And there we hear WWV. Now that's listening through the speakers connected to the Mac. You still have the option to listen to the speakers on the uh, rig itself. I'll turn up the volume. Now you wouldn't want to have both sets of speakers on at the same time for the simple reason that the digital signal processing within Cubic results in a delay in the audio signal from the analog receive signal you hear on the rig which is fine if you're just scanning across the band and wanting to listen to different stations but if you're uh, on a QSO for example uh, that delay may be a bit annoying so you might be better off turning down the audio coming from the Mac and listening to the audio through the rig speakers so having done that what we can now do is uh, we can change to a different frequency seems to be some sort of station going on down here quite center it we can do that up here and uh, we can listen and there we hear that station and we see that the frequency 9.265 is now reflected on the rig as well now one thing that uh, you do not get through this software is you do not get mode changes reflected on the rig so whereas we're on AM mode for listening to this station we see that the rig is still on USB so to put the rig in the correct mode, we have to use the button on the front panel. And uh, now we're in AM mode. So now we're in the correct mode on the rig to listen to that station. Okay, so that's really no problem. Once you've synchronized the modes, you can scan across the band uh, to your heart's content. Uh, I showed how you can click within Cubic and change the frequency. You can just as easily turn the tuning dial and you will see the, uh, the tuning bar in uh, cubic move to correspond. So I don't know what station we have coming up here. But uh, there appears to be another station. And uh, again, 9.565 and that's reflected by the frequency shown in cubic up here. So just remember, if you change from uh, where we are now and say, let's go up to, uh, we'll go down to 40 meters, uh, what we'll find is that we want to be on lower sideband for listening to the 40 meter band. And uh, the rig is still on AM. So again, we press the corresponding button on the rig and move it to uh, upper sideband, press it again, and we go to lower sideband. So assuming you take care of that uh, minor detail, then you can go back and forth uh, between the, the bands at, at completely at will. And that's really all there is to it. So at this point, let's go back and review what we did to get us to this point. So in summary, the first step was to install the Mac SDR software, in this case Cubic SDR, and verify that it operates correctly with your RSP. The second step is to download and install the appropriate driver software for your rig interface. And then thirdly, connect your rig to the Mac, run Cubic SDR, and set up the rig control parameters. And that's all there is to it. Now before I leave, I wanted to show you some resources that you may find useful. First one, the Cubic SDR and the Mac API are both available for download from sdrplay.com. Secondly, there is a Cubic SDR manual, and that can be found at the link shown there. Thirdly, the link to the Silicon Labs drivers for the particular interface I used for the Kenwood TS590SG. And then finally, another useful resource for hams who like to use uh, Mac software is Mac Ham Radio. We'll try to put the uh, actual links in the written description on the video and they'll also be available in the written version of this app note. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. And for more information, please visit our website at sdrplay.com. 73.